Hello everybody and welcome back to the Calgary Guide to Understanding Disease video series. Today we're going to be talking about obstructive shock, its pathogenesis, complications, and clinical findings. If you'd like to support us in our work, please like this video just as it's starting out so that more people can find us on YouTube, and please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks. There are three main causes of obstructive shock, and they all involve obstructing the flow of blood to the heart. First, cardiac tamponade which is basically fluid in the pericardium under pressure. The increased pericardial pressure compresses all chambers of the heart, eventually exceeding the cardiac venous filling pressure, which reduces the venous return to the heart, resulting in an underfilled left ventricle. Second, a pulmonary embolism will obstruct pulmonary blood flow, will increase the right ventricle afterload, resulting in the right ventricle facing a greater amount of pressure, otherwise known as increased right ventricular afterload, which reduces the stroke volume that the right ventricle is able to pump with every pump. When the blood eventually works its way to the left ventricle through the lungs, that results in an underfilled left ventricle. Third, attention pneumothorax, which involves increased pressure in the pleural cavity, causing intrathoracic pressure to exceed venous filling pressures in the heart, again, reducing venous return to the heart, leading to an underfilled left ventricle. This underfilled left ventricle will result in a lower stroke volume and lower cardiac output. And since cardiac output is a key determinant of blood pressure, less flow of blood in the blood vessels will lower a patient's blood pressure. Similarly, reduced cardiac output will cause all the signs and symptoms of obstructive shock. Now, unlike hypovolemic and distributive shock, the blood that's prevented from going into the heart has to go somewhere. So the blood actually backs up into the venous system, increasing venous pressure. The increased amount of pressure in the venous system distends the veins, and veins can distend quite a lot since veins have high compliance. This results in a profound elevation of one's jugular venous pressure, the patient's JVP. Fluid under pressure will extravasate out of the veins and into body tissues, resulting in peripheral edema, such as edema of the legs. Fluid will also leak out of blood vessels in the lungs, resulting in pulmonary edema, which reduces the gas exchange ability of the lungs resulting in dyspnea, the sensation of shortness of breath, and tachypnea, an increase in one's breathing rate. The heart tries to compensate for this reduced cardiac output by increasing the heart rate, leading to tachycardia. But of course, there's going to be insufficient organ perfusion with shock. First of all, the skin. The body preferentially vasoconstricts the extremities to preserve blood and warmth to key vital organs. Also, there's less arterial blood, which is red, and greater amounts of venous blood, which is blue, in the skin. Taken together, that results in cold, mottled extremities. In the brain, reduced cerebral blood flow results in cerebral hypoxia, which results in a progressively declining level of consciousness. In the heart, reduced coronary perfusion results in myocardial ischemia, and if severe, results in a type of cardiac arrest called pulseless electrical activity. In the kidneys, Reduced blood flow to the kidneys results in renal ischemia, or death of renal tissue, causing acute tubular necrosis, which is a type of acute kidney injury. Reduced blood flow to the kidneys is also defined, of course, as reduced glomerular filtration rate, and that can be reflected in an increase in the amount of serum creatinine measured, and also reduced volume of urine produced by the patient. And that's it for the pathogenesis, complications, and clinical findings of obstructive shock. Thank you for your attention. And if you'd like to join the thousands of people supporting the Kagra Guide in our work, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.